Hi, welcome to this week's podcast. I'm Mary Abazia, and with me, of course, is Tom Spitali and Sean Wellam. And we're talking about something that we're outrageously passionate about, you know, getting it right. When people come to a workshop, quote unquote, what makes a good workshop or bad and what's the X factor? And we've talked a bit about, you know, getting people there and, and what magic happens in the room. But we we kind of in the last one said, what happens after? Because it's not everyone can have a good workshop, but what happens to really make it stick? And so which one of you wants to kind of take its stick forward? Sean. <laughs> oh, right. Am I that? I, 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 Tom was pointing <laughs> off the computer on my screen. I'm like, who's he pointing at? Have I, I we've got to guess. It's everything backwards, you know? I mean, I, this to me, I'm pointing away from Sean in, in, on my computer, but it's at him. And for those of you listening on audio only, none of that makes any sense, but we are on video with these little windows like we're on like a news channel or something. Anyway, to so the Why question. Are you watching the videos, by the way. Watch the videos. Yeah, that's true. We're, we're all good looking. Exactly. Well, most of us are. At least, at least one of us is good looking. That's what I'll say. Um, so, so the question to the point, I, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff required to make a successful workshop become a, a successful embedded part of the business to drive real results rather than just, you know, raising excitement and enthusiasm, giving some direction, giving some confidence. All that stuff is an output of a workshop but it needs to maintain, to deliver. And as I said, there's a lot of factors. One that is absolutely necessary, but not sufficient on its own is, and I'll throw this one out first, leadership support, not casual, not sort of supportive, absolute driven from the leadership of the business that has the, that have the capability to make resource decisions, and to set the tone in terms of what questions they're asking of people, what, what report outs they're looking for. If you have no leadership driving, you are very, very likely to at least be suboptimal in your output, if not fail completely. So leadership involvement is a given, but it's not sufficient on its own. But I think it's the most important because without it, you're really in trouble. It's my opinion. Number one. I think it's number one. Because let's just say that you are going to have a session, you're going to bring up the skills of a select group of people and you don't expect to cascade out the learnings or the marketing common language or anything beyond those, those 10 people. What good is it to give those 10 people the skills if when they go to present their plans, utilizing these skills, the people reviewing the plans have no idea about the approach that they've used and um, the approach that they're taking to uh, analyze their market more comprehensively, to choose their strategies in a more differentiating manner, to come up with you know, great execution plans. Um, it is the number one lowest rated item on our surveys over the last 20 years. The item that says, um, my manager will support the use of these tools when I return to the office. People don't have confidence in that, and it's a big miss. And, and so if you want it to stick, I think that's number one. I could say a lot more about it, but Sean, you, you, you said it eloquently, and I'm just piling on on that that particular item right there. That I want to important. illustrate that because I think it it is really good. We've worked with a company recently where um, senior leadership um, made a point to make sure to talk to us as we were designing it and said, this is what I want people to think about as they're in the workshops. And then when we had the workshop, they actually, um, one was there in person. They came in and said, come on, guys, you know, you have all these new products that we need to launch and we need to do it right. Um, and then one of the other senior leaders, you know, beamed in on on Zoom because uh, they were in a different part of the world, but still said, this is this is what we do. And, you know, it's up to you guys to to do it well. And it was empowering and it helped people understand how, what, you know, because you can sit in a, a session for a week and go, okay, that was interesting. But how does it fit the bigger vision that the company is trying to achieve? And 
good leaders connect those dots so that when people leave, you know, in like as Tom said, we see higher ratings where I'm confident that my senior leaders will support this when they've had that type of interaction. And then the leaders show up either, so sometimes we have leaders show up at the end of our workshop, if it's a longer one, to see drafts of what's coming out, or they make a point to say, we will meet in two weeks and we want to see how you've further shaped your strategies based on what you've learned. And I want to hear what you learned too. So yeah. that's, I think that those are some best practices that, that begin to make it stick better. You know, there's a, there's another aspect you just reminded me of, which is not really how you make it stick. It's it's, how, it's a failure mode and it's the leadership thing. But when leadership, um, hijack the session which we've seen a few times which is like what i've got you all here let me tell you about this and it just takes people off track so leadership can be a force for good they can also derail you uh, and and just be absent there's a whole range of of so it's why they're so important um but i won't <laughs> you I mean won't... you don't want them to sit in the back of the room and, and pull people out one at a time to do their evaluations because they're all that... there <laughs> that has happened. We're not joking. This you may think we make these up for effect. These these are all. We should actually do an episode on on uh, the the worst of the top ten worst things to have uh, happened. But no. Um, another aspect I wanted to bring in, and Mary, this is something you talk about a lot: is getting that mix of people right. You know, if let's let's tick the leadership box. You've got good support. The people in the room are. There's two benefits or possibly three benefits of getting that mix of people from different departments right. One, you're going to get different perspectives. And in, in the workshop, we love a bit of creativity and we spark off each other and we find that that innovative managed chaos sometimes throws up the best ideas because you've got different opinions in the room. But longer term for implementation also means that when you need to go to legal or go to finance or talk to somebody from operations, hopefully they've been exposed, they've been part of the genesis of this, and they feel a sense of ownership. And the reason I mentioned you, Mary, because you often remind me that, that you invite the people that can say no sometime in the future, you know, get, get them on board early. So I think that mix is my, my second offer for the how you make these, these programs stick and work is get the mix right. And if I could like put that into an even like uh, like ladder that up even a little bit more to call it uh, cascading, <laughs> you know, cascading the language uh, and the methodology out as far as you possibly can, not just to other marketers, but as Sean mentions, um, as far as possible to cross functional team members so that we can create this common language and approach um, and, and, and really look for those opportunities for more and more people to have input into the plan. Of course, the more the people that have input the the greater the chance that the plan will actually be executed so the idea is if you really want this to stick what is the plan for after the session to expose more people to the the, the methodology and the approach and that doesn't have to mean that you've got to invest in two three or four day workshops for other um, cross-functional team members. That, that can be done in a number of ways and not through a number of resources, including just webinars, or I know Mary, you want to talk even more about videos and, 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 and other, other resources that need to be made available to make sure that that cascading is done in a way um, that allows people to, to, to really understand the material and, and actually execute on it. Do you want to go there next or? Yeah, 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 yeah. You you always are reading my mind. Um, when Sean said invite people that say no, actually, I go a bit more extreme and say invite people that could really screw up your plans later. And you could have them in the workshop, which is great. You know, it has to be managed. But um, if not, as Tom's saying, after the session, um, inviting finance, R&D, you know, definitely sales. Um, these different groups that have different perspectives are really critical. And none of the tools that we use are rocket science. It really, they're simple. And you could have a beer and pizza lunch for two hours and, um, and, and have people come in and work on an influencer map together as an example. So, you know, the, especially if you bring them in earlier in the process so they have a chance to weigh in and affect your brain too you know like oh i forgot about the payer how important the payer is becoming or whatever it is 
because that's the times that, the, that good companies make sure to broaden their perspective so that when they bake the next plan, it's not like this, but it's actually more broad and more um, more perspectives are in uh, in the plan. So. <laughs> Oh, I totally agree. Okay, let me throw another one out there. There's also the the momentum driven by um, having objectives, things that need to happen, having a timeline, having measurable events in the future. If you leave a session with just um, an open door of like, yeah, we've got some good positioning, we've got a good value proposition, we understand our customers, we've got some good segments and so on and so forth. If you don't leave it with, by this date, this people, these people, or this person will have done this. If you don't have a um, the next steps somewhat hard coded, it very often will drift. Particularly if you finish a session late in the week, which is typical, and we have a weekend to uh, to get over it and come back to a, a Monday morning of backlog emails, and then try and pick that momentum up. It's really hard. You you got to have commitments that have been made for future. Yeah, I Tom had mentioned videos and to fit with that, Sean, one of the things that we've been trying to do, I mean, we've been doing this for over 25 years and we're always trying to figure out how that, you know, after the workshop can really um, work better. And so we have the the tools that I mentioned as PowerPoint. We have videos now that if somebody wasn't part of the session, but you know, you say, you know, two weeks from now everyone's going to watch the segmentation video and we're going to we're going to make sure that segmentation is right. You know, we're going to look at the draft that we did during the workshop and then we're going to actually um, pressure test it and work on it more together, but make sure everyone understands it. So these types of tools in the book um, allow everyone to level set so that you know, that they can do that after the session. And as Sean said, if you put a time on it, like in two weeks, we're going to do this and four weeks, we're going to do that. It, it keeps it on track so that people don't end up just going back to fighting fires. I think there's two types of follow-ups too. There's the actual follow-up from the plan conclusions that you made in the workshop about your specific project that you're working on. Okay. There's a series of steps that are involved there. Maybe um, taking some of the we wish we knews the uh, research items that you feel like you need more data to to solidify. You know, there's some follow up items uh, specifically related to your workshop conclusions around that. Some other things that you say that you're going to do strategically and tactically. There's some follow up dates that need to be established for those things to be completed. But there's a whole another category, and that is how are we going to take this whole approach, this methodology, and again, cascade this out so that becomes the way that we think, the way that we plan. And so there's a series of steps too. Where are we going to go uh, next in terms of exposing more people to the methodology? Um, how are we going to get the people that are going to carry this forward in our organization to um, you know, be more conversant, more able to really kind of teach others in the organization what they've learned and, and how to do it. Those types of dates and follow-up steps are necessary as well. I think there's, there's, there's that whole thing about what gets measured gets done. So that, that that's the whole idea of having some measurable plan that comes out of it. Even if it's just a, we will have conducted this element of desk research by the end of June or something that, that is in a, a meaningful calendar, that event comes. Another way of maintaining that momentum, of course, and these days it's a lot easier to do this, is for the cohort of the of the group. Maybe it's the, a, a table. The way we can stru structure our workshops are typically we could have 30 people in a room, maybe in five teams of six. That's the sort of structure that many of you will be familiar with. So either at the table level, the team level of five or six, or the whole class level, getting back together on a regular basis just to remind yourself of the energy and the enthusiasm and and the the reality of what you achieved can also help if it works for you and the reason i say it's easy now we've got zoom we've got teams it's easy to grab a 20 minute touch base meeting with your team on a friday or something and just to feed off each other because a lot of the reasons momentum gets lost is because you get sucked straight back into the day to day and not many people have a ton of spare time their job consumes all of the hours available that's just the way it is so make an effort make some time to stay in touch and stay connected with your at least with your your sub team from one of these sessions in the, in the short term future it's a good way of keeping that energy going i would suggest 
Yeah, I like that. Um, and some of our, you know, we are lucky because we have worked with some really smart people that, you know, we don't try to figure it out on our own. We actually are working very closely with them. And uh, one of our clients said, I really, it drives me crazy when we show up to do strategy and everyone feels like they have a blank piece of paper. And so one of the exercises and, and even in the one pager, if you will, is the look back, you know, what what's happened over the last year, because, you know, you, you actually have a lot of work that typically has been done. If it hasn't been by your team, somebody that previously worked in that market or in that industry. And so those are always nice things as you're, you know, trying to make sure that you're bringing all the best um, ideas in to work on is to do that look back and look back at yourself, but also look back at the customers, what's going on with the customers. Yeah, I think I, I thought of also one more uh, way of cascading out, we said in, in setting dates for the, for the future and plans for the future. And you know, there's the, the stuff I mentioned about specific to the plan you worked on in the workshop. And then there's items that are specific to kind of rolling the methodology out. A third category I can think of is a lot of times we have global teams that are in our workshops and they're trying to figure out now, how do I take the conclusions that were made from a global perspective in this workshop and regionalize those plans to, to take into consideration the local circumstances for the people that are on the ground in the various countries and markets that they operate in? And that's just another important item. How are we going to do that? People are really um, kind of excited about it, though, because when they, they see that by taking a global perspective, you can create a hypothesis around what a market's influence patterns look like or a segmentation, they also see how they can take that hypothesis and, and as long as they don't get too wed to it, they can take it to the regions and say, hey, look, this is probably wrong for your region. Tell us how to move, move the, the, the bubbles on the influence map or how to, how to adjust the segmentation for your local circumstances. And what we find out is, is that it really isn't all wrong. It's actually mostly right. And the hypothesis that the global teams create in the workshop are then to be, are be able to be adjusted on the margins by the regions who then feel like they've now had a hand in creating the plan and they're ready to go execute. They feel they feel heard. So that's just another important thing to plan for to make sure that the momentum from a session continues and, you know, what people, the skills people have learned to become more um, embedded in the company culture going forward. Mm -hmm. I think that's great, Tom. Yeah, I mean, because so many times we get asked, what can we do to make this this stick? And like you said, you know, not only that immediate team, but building that process for longer term and cascading out. And then the the holy grail is always getting those other global areas or other regions to somehow also embrace not only the results that are coming up, but the process, the way of thinking that hopefully will help them. Um, create great plans and think more strategically. So, Sean, any closing thoughts? No, I, I think you know it, a lot of the success is 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 before the session. It's in in laying the ground rules, getting the right people involved, getting the leadership engaged. There's a lot of pre work. But let's not underestimate the power of what happens within the session as well, because the more relevant, engaging, fun, and energetic it is, you create a swell of momentum that carries forward. And that's also a factor. It's not just in what happens after the session. It's leaving that session with a degree of enthusiasm and energy that is important too. So uh, it, it's a it's a combination of of, uh, of effects. But ultimately, you've got to want to, you know, with all the circumstances, you've got to want to carry this forward because that that's what will do it ultimately. Yeah, You're very good. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you have a few tips on how you might run your work sessions um, and strategy better. Thank you. Thank you.